So welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, Jay Trader, small cap room, uh, here with uh, my friend, uh, Paul uh, Carford. So we'll go over, as said, on Tesla, trade, execution, process plan, and then we will um, look with Carford at AYTU. We will also look at, um, AYTU was a pretty good long this morning, and I know the reason why uh, to take short on this. All right, so let's start first with um, with Tesla. This is what happened on Tesla this morning. So I'm gonna focus first on the pre-market. And the reason why I was short biased. So the first thing over here was the watch list, which I posted this morning. I had a plan uh, if we were going to bounce or if we were going to reject. We had already call 700 and put 650. Uh, price was around 680, 670. I like to trade a little bit out of the money. So play um, with the low premium, cheaper premium. And the reason why I chose 700 is because it was an important resistance area and then put 650 because it was an important support area. So I said at open, if we have a pop and fail of one minute J lines, all right, traders, I'll look to trade for a rejection and buy put 650, 670. So the plan over here, we start already in pre-market for the fact that we started having a rejection of this 677, uh, another over here, 676. You can see a set of lower highs. So I started taking short around 750 uh, for about $7 and everything over here out for $10. Uh, the trade was over here. I will zoom in. These are the levels that I will focusing on uh, the daily. So I think we can start putting uh, one minute. Maybe you can see better the pre-market being that we have less ticks. All right. So this was the pre-market. I start looking uh, for some weakness over here. You can see that basically this was the support level, 670. We filled at 670, I took short over here risking 673 this small wick and then we started bouncing and then came down so i wanted to pay myself 663 for half and then i got out everything over here into the 660 i didn't keep for this more unwind so this basically was my pre-market trade i tried to get in again took a, a small loss over here one buck and then I started to unwind again what instead was my main plan was to short the open. That was the A plus setup. So let's zoom in. We have to focus on what? We have to focus on this pre-market resistance. You can see that that's a very good spot. Uh, rejection one time, rejection second time. And we open weak comparing to that pre-market eye. We open below VWAP. And I was waiting for that push in that moment uh, recorded in the room. Uh, I said, look to trade that push and look for a rejection. So I started over here, uh, 133663, then added more 665, added more 665 and 17. And I was risking, first I was risking the 665, but then I decided to use the 670. The range was huge. I saw this flag. You can see this nice juicy flag over here. And then we add that unwind. So basically, when we are popping over here to 668, we had a huge amount of sellers that kept me in the trade, gave me confidence, and cover here something 666, more over here 652. So I got all this drop over here, and finally I got this 643 over here, 642 and 95 exactly over here. So I got all this move, and you can see on the daily that we basically were looking at certain levels. Over here, we had the, the pop. We were looking at the previous day low. We were looking at the um, 28th of February, also low. 
um, to have more unwind and unwind came you can see this nice juicy flag all right this is a nice bear flag over here i missed my entry i was explaining uh, in the room that this could have been a very nice unwind i was a little bit uh, honestly afraid to take it because i was up used with this first day i took a 4k profit trading this and uh, puts with my bear but this was also a very nice trade uh, rejection of the trend line break. You could stop above 655, 666, and then we had all this unwind. So basically, why we had this unwind? All this morning, I was saying, look for ES. Uh, ES, uh, SPY, Qs were unwinding. And uh, when they started to unwind, we had this Tesla simply following. And you can see that this is a, just like a big trend line, all right? So how to know when you have to get out? This is what um, traders often uh, have problems with. So you cannot basically just like get out because you're in profit, all right? You have to get out because you have a nice trend line break, because you reached at a big uh, whole dollar number, because you reached at the previous uh, daily support. So you can see this. We basically broke over here the downtrend line. We had a push and then curl and then started like bouncing over here. And another thing, another thing over here, traders, was the options. So when this morning I was saying look to buy 650 and 670 puts, this was the option. So you can understand how the option moved. You could have bought, bought them 23 and on this move we got over here a pretty good wash pretty good unwind it went simply from uh, 23 24 to 32 and then this dip uh, you could have bought them around 25 26 and it went 100 percent so what will change in the options from today uh, till tomorrow or friday basically with the same underlying move in terms of percentage uh, when you will play uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, options, they will pay you so much more in percentage comparing to today. So, for example, 650 to 610, today they pay 100%. Tomorrow, day after, day even after, they will pay maybe two, 300, 400%, all right? That is playing option weekly, out of the money, all right, uh, near uh, expiration. So, this is the... I would say the magic, the pro uh, to trade OTM options. Um, over here, we have also Carfit. Carfit, are you here? Yes, I am. All right. We will talk about first AYTU. So I leave the word to you. I have over here your trade. If you can, uh, if you can explain to members and also to, to traders out there the reason why you took long, um, this is using Cobra, right? Yes, this is using Cobra. Okay. I'm just gonna I have two accounts. I have a small account with Trade Zero and I have a bigger account with Cobra. But lately I've been only using Cobra. Even though this morning at market open, uh, the market was uh, DAS, DAS uh, froze, which was extremely uncomfortable, of course. All right. So this morning we had AYTU. So let's look for a second. AYTU. What are the stats? Uh, what is the float? So AYTU, generally I go over here on Finvits or the wise on Yahoo. And we can see that we have an on a market cap trader. So very small uh, market cap uh, for, for the stock. 25 million float. So this is not the market float. 30% institutional ownership. And then over here we had the news. So news is about coronavirus. That's the reason why this is a momentum stock. And uh, we were looking at this news pretty early in the morning. So what was the reason that made you take a long on this trade over here? I will put your trade on the side. A few things. For me, first, it was um, the institutional was above the 20, 25% that I like to have um, usually. And then the other one was definitely, of course, it's a Corona play. So 
I did like the news, which Jen Peck did, of course, um, uh, emphasize a bit on it, saying that uh, um, it's, I think it was in regards to test uh, test units. So, um, of course, that people would be able to, um, they would have an exclusive dis distribution of the of the test unit, which of course every country needs these test units. I mean, um, if you cannot test if you if you have the virus, I mean, that's almost uh, I can't say as good at, as having the cure. But it's definitely business-wise, um, uh, very, very, very useful. And this one says that um, it gives you results in two to ten minutes. So this would be huge if, if they would get that exclusive contract to be able to offer those test kits to um, to the U.S. So basically, you're saying that you take this trade due to the strong catalyst because this is a, a scenario that uh, all the coronavirus stocks are in play and they can like grind up. And also because you have a pretty decent amount of institutional ownership, right? Exactly. And the other thing as well that you always have to watch is you have to watch for the actual setups. So the minute that, of course, it popped, it was around 8.10. Um, I checked the news. I think Jen Peck had mentioned it. And once we got that curl, it was just before 8.15. I wanted to get long um, um, it, um, at 1.01. On the, on the break of one was where I wanted to, um, to get long. So, of course, because we are in this um, this type of market, I told myself um, that I can maybe be a little bit more cautious. So once the, um, the one broke on that green candle, the next candle we got that little red that was um, stalling and right when on, on the next candle that we broke the previous high of that red, that's where I got in long immediately. Um, full one third uh, um, um, full size. I mean, one third of, of my full size, and and I took the trade um, um, all the way to one forty, one fifty, one sixty. So here I was in about one twelve, and I was actually risking one. So basically, um, roughly ten cents risk for uh, basically four to one, five to one, and six to one uh, um, return. So you had in about. 15 minutes of job like a 40 percent on your trade considering this like exactly, average exactly. of 110 and 150 not not bad uh net profit for for trading this and another thing uh when you're trading this pre-market is uh what you're focusing on i mean i know we cannot uh, explain everything over here because also some members some traders over here are not part of the room but are you taking into consideration if the stock had, for example, dilution, if the stock had a, a previous uh, gap and crap or had on the history uh, days where it just simply popped and went, uh, how, how do you find these, these setups? How can you like um, help the new members who joined over here to figure out when this will run or when this will fade? Well, to me, the um, one key part that um, that um, I think is important is you have to watch volume. I mean, volume is what moves is what moves the market for sure. So, on um, free market, once this run and everyone um, sees basically what has been happening with um, with the corona. But if you if you look at the volume free market, basically you had an incline from the first, second, third candle. And then um, the fourth candle of, of the volume was a bit lower, but look at the volume of, the, of that cell um, um, from the one. It was much lower than the previous green candle, um, the, the volume candle. So then once we got um, uh, um, the, the fifth candle, one, two, three, four, five, six, that sixth candle green was much, was much bigger. So then you can see that there's a strong there's a strong momentum um, on the volume going up. So to me that was the the, um, the first thing. And once sub zero, um, mentally speaking as well, um, once you have these sub zero stocks that break one and um, that that one dollar level and they hold, that's definitely a key um, a key spot. And and of course I tend to um, to be more quick on taking setups because setups are there for that we know that on um, that we have a high win um, percentage on these curls free market sometimes of course we love to have them on j lines but when you have a curl on vwap and at the same time the break of of, of a strong one dollar mark that's a double signal not to, um, um, to even add to it you have a, um, a good increase of volume that keeps going up keeps going up so there the risk was very very small i mean having a 10 cent risk for a possible three to one four to one um, to me, it was a no-brainer. 
I personally didn't trade this, but I think you have uh, you had a very good setup. And what I, I I would like to add, just like my two cents on this, is that if we look at this AYTU in the past, we basically didn't have any big volume except these days over here in in March. Um, this uh, this big pop, this big pop, and then we had some nice downtrend over here. So uh, we see that these pops are at 140, 150, and then we have more resistance over here, $192. So I totally agree with you that uh, building a position over here above one, you have a pretty good range before touching some resistance where we'll find bag holders over here in the 140, at least in the 150. So for me, it's a very good game plan you had over here. And of course, um, um, if you can see, um, of course, lately uh, this week, I've been trying to, to force myself because, uh, Jay, you've been, of course, telling me, look, you, you have to have a plan. You have to write your plan down. And I think that it's, it's crucially important. I mean, just, um, just having um, a trade plan where, where you know that you want to short the stock and that you know that once you're in the short that you'll take profit eventually. That's not a plan. You, um, that's just uh, I'm having a bias of whether you're short or long, but having a specific plan um, that I try to share in the room every day, and it's not that um, that I'm perfect on my plan. But today, today I was spot on on both the on both my plans. That although I was long pre market, when I saw the um, the price action and of course the the movement and um, on um, after the open. I was definitely short bias from there. So I said, um, after I have such a strong pre-market uh, um, action, I wanted to keep 170 as my risk. So um, the plan that I wrote pre-market, Jay um, had a plan to go long, which um, if we had failed Jay lines and then curled um, um, after 1030 for the long, myself, I said that if I had a push to 150, 160, I would definitely go short risking 170. And as you can see, that was that's exactly what um, what would have been a perfect trade. Of course, um, in I didn't take the trade because DOS had frozen at the open, and of course I was in INO, which is a much more expensive stock. So and with such crazy movement and halts and all of that, so I was a bit lost uh, and and a, um, a bit shaky. So I, um, I stuck to only trading one stock at the open. But according to to, to having a plan. Um, even though 190 um, would have been maybe a second level to risk off of, I felt that 170 was a key level because it broke 170 and immediately failed and, um, and never was able to make it over. So I chose 170 as my key level to risk off of and then slowly scale in, but scale in starting 150. 150 up to 160 and why did, did i choose 150 is because 150 if you look at the pre-market chart it was a level that that twice had had tried to to stay over and failed um both times so i felt that 150 was a good level to start scaling and up to 160 risking maximum 170 and the profit targets was 120 and um and the one which would be the 200 on the five on the five minute 200 ema and it, it worked exactly, exactly according to plan. It went up to 165, I think, and, and failed all the way down to below one. So that would have been a perfect trade according to plan. So very, very good one over here. I really like this trade. And today I know that you had another one on I know I saw that you called this pre-market um, and simply the execution war uh, spot on over here. I will share your your chart. I just posted for you in projects room. You can take the oh, trade. Okay, so um, let's see in projects. All right. So members and traders can see uh, and understand why you were looking to trade this short because this is a pretty is a pretty like for for um. For a stock has a, has a lot of range. We had, uh, let's put it over here on a daily one second. We had a lot of volatility in the past days. Uh, this is one of those stocks that as AIM, as uh, CODX, uh, coronavirus stock, fueled by the news, fueled also by, in these days over here, by the shorts that were trapped. And over here we had simply a blow up the volume then 
a huge, a huge cut. And I saw that you basically traded this day. You waited for this market to dump to give it the backside before taking any trades front side and to get smashed. So that was a very good, um, very good job. Yeah, definitely. I waited for the first red day. So after such a move from going from three, four dollars all the way up to nineteen twenty, I waited for the first red day. And after yesterday's red day, which was a huge mover. And the price action yesterday was was literally to me elementary trading. I mean, as far as as seeing it, it was a perfect staircase down. Every pop gave the perfect opportunity to short, gave full dollar um, um, trades the whole day. So um, of course, um, I, I can't say that I regret I didn't trade it yesterday. But yesterday, with such market conditions, you gave us the, the best suggestions to um, to to not trade. I did have some trades, but I, did, um, I stayed away, um, I would say 90% of, of the day I didn't trade. So today coming in, um, it's more of a, a, um, of a better position to be after that we confirmed uh, the, the strong red day yesterday. So I wanted to short pops. So okay, of course, so if you look at my trade in, in pre-market, we were, we were basically failing and, and going down three minute J lines was much higher. And I was a bit, um, I was a bit skeptic. I said, "Well, you know what? Let me just take because the initial position that I wanted to trade this trade was 1,000 shares, but um, I started in with 100 and 100. So I had 200 shares on those two uh, on, on those two levels, and I said, "Look, you never know. This thing could 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 die all the way to seven. So I did take a very small um, position, even though I did want to add." Um, around 950, risking the red to green, which was 975, um, the, the white dotted line. But once um, that we failed so much from nine all the way down to 825, 850, I told myself, look, um, there's no reason not to take this, um, this profit. So on the higher low, I took the, the, the full trade off. So I took those 200 shares off at um, around 850. And I, um, I waited for the move because I tend to have that, um, that, that mistake where I tend to enter too early. I mean, you always call me out on that and it's, <laughs> it's something I'm trying to fix. So once we got the higher low, I, um, I got out completely and I waited. I told myself, look, I want to get in on the first position around VWAP. So at VWAP around um, 950, which is also a, 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 a pre-market support area where I, um, I put in 100 shares. And I had um, a fantasy order around 1025 and I, um, I did type it down as well in my trade plan that 11 was my maximum risk because if this stock gets to 11, my, my trade plan is no longer valid. It means that it, it, um, it's breaking pre-market tops. It's, going to, it, it's curling to go higher. So 11 was my max risk. I had a hard stop sitting at 11 and the stock popped to my entry at 1025 and it halted. So here I am, and at 10.25, I had 200 shares. So basically from 9.50 to 10.25, that's 300 shares. My average was around, um, I think it was 9.80 or 9.90 because um, from the 100 to 200 on top. So I was in 300 shares around 9.90. And of course, the first thing in my mind was like, in reality, I'm fucked because this thing is halted on the way up. It's going to open and blast to 11. So I had my hard stop at 11. I said, no questions asked. I don't care if it breaks 11, I'll get stopped out. Okay. The and in that, that moment, um, during this uh, halt time, you are basically trying to change. You are basically trying to respect your, your plan in your mind. You are ready to stop over here or you are simply, okay, no, maybe I, I, I will add a little bit more if it goes up. How much no, position no. you are, uh, 300 shares. Okay, so totally, shares. totally, you are 300 shares plus 200 over here. No, 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 no. Th um, 200 on top, 100 there, so total 300. On 1,000, because 1,000 was your total position that exactly. you wanted to take. So exactly. you are one third front side, and I think that this is what beginner traders do as an error. They, they start too early, and still, when they are front side, they end up adding everything and maybe they even borrow more to add on the front side instead i i seen over here that you are like only one third front side and then you add a back side which is the reason that you are looking for and is what uh, advanced traders will uh, should like you know size in you know when you have the back side 
Well, to me, I'm definitely backside, but when I add it there, I'm not confirming that I'm backside it's because this is only one candle. So w when the halt um, um, w w was over, I got the stuff. Normally, I would have hot keyed all the way on top, probably around um, 10 to 50 or whatever. But, but I told myself, I don't know if this stuff is going to hold and go higher. So I told myself I have to add um, closer to be in the money. So since my, my average was around 990 or 992, I don't know, I don't remember exactly. Once we went below my previous um, um, entry, that's when I, uh, um, I slammed the remaining of my order, even though I told myself that because this stock has halted and the markets are in a, 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 a very crazy action today with all the halts, I lowered my max size to 650 shares instead of 1,000. Of course, right now in hindsight, I regret it because it would have been a beautiful trade, but I put in 350 shares um, at that $10. So once $10 came, I put 350 shares. Um, so now I had 650 total. And then on the first drop to the bottom, I wanted to, um, to cover one fifth at J lines, but I covered a little bit before. When it failed J lines, my hotkey um, filled um, uh, uh, on the ask, on the, on the pop up higher. And that's where I got filled that first one fifth. And then from there, I, I, um, I just um, scaled out one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, all the way down. So very good trade over here. And uh, we can see that in the last two days, uh, it had tremendous volume on this unwind, uh, that, on these unwinds that we had yesterday and today. I mean, these bars, this is a one minute chart. We have bars of 1.2 million, 1.4 million over here for uh, I know on a one minute chart and over here another halt and this this stock over here with the new halts rules halted a couple of times today so uh, did you feel comfortable trading something that was halting so much I mean why are you afraid of maybe a halt and then a big push or you are more well, comfortable the the knowing that halt. everybody was a bag older from the previous day the first halt, I won't lie, I was very, very uncomfortable. That's why I told myself that I don't care how bad it is. I don't want to take the loss, but I, I had a hard stop at 11. Not even 11.01. I had a hard stop at 11. I told myself that um, out of a halt, it could pop and stop me out. Even if it would stop me out, I would re-enter the trade after confirmation, but I cannot play with my stops anymore. I've had too many ex um, um, experiences in the past where... Um, basically, my evolution as a trader today is I'm at the, um, the boom and bust stage. Um, I, I'm basically green four out of five days uh, on a month. I'm 80% green. And then one day, I throw away 75% of, um, of my wins on one loss. So um, I'm no longer um, I, I'm accepting to do those things anymore. So once I'm in a trade, I hot key my, my hard stop. I don't care. No more playing around um, with with the planned risk. But my risk was 11. I put it at 11. If I got stopped out, that's it. But um, the halts on the way down was more comfortable because I had a good average and it was halting on the way down. So that um, I, I had no problem just uh, just holding through it, you know. But definitely the first halt was extremely uncomfortable because it went so fast and filled my order at that 10:24. Um, it was extremely fast. So um, that was a very uncomfortable um, thing. But at the end of the day, I wrote my, my trade plan in, in, in the boiler room. That was my plan. I stuck to the plan. And it shows me again how this is the way to trade. You have a plan, you stick to your plan, and you trade your plan. This is what many beginners don't do because maybe they see other traders, they are trading two, three things, and maybe the stock is out of their plan. They didn't prepare themselves. Uh, they don't have the, the levels they have to enter to stop. They didn't calculate their R, the size they have to take, and they just jump in because they want, you know, the fast money. Fast money in trading, uh, traders can exist maybe for one day, two days. You're lucky you take that alert. But if you want to be consistent over time and over time, you have to learn a strategy. You have to learn to reduce your risk. You have to learn to cut your losses, to let your wins run, and basically – you have to find out what it works for you. For example, I've seen Carfit over here explain his trade and I'm surprised and not surprised, but I'm like proud of him because uh, Phil, one month ago, he was only trading shorts, 99% shorts. And now he's also trading longs. It's about 
two weeks with all this SSR, microflow, coronavirus stock that he's trading long and he's getting comfortable and consistent in taking these longs. One thing, Jay, that's important when, when looking at the INO trade, the minute I added um, that, that 650 shares at 10, um, immediately my stop was no longer 11. Um, immediately I was in, I had a hard stop at 1050. I had a hard stop at 1050. I didn't care um, um, you know, because if, if the stock had gone from the halt to 11, 300 shares from 990 to 11 was, was close to $300. And, and that was the, the amount that I wanted to risk um, uh, initially on that trade. So I knew that the minute that I had 650 shares um, with a 10 average going to, to 1050 is going to give me approximately $300 on loss. So I was willing to risk $300 on this trade maximum. So once I, um, I, um, I got in at 10, I hot key, hot spot, 1050, enter, done. And I, and I just waited. Um, I didn't care. So um, it's important that, um, to understand that um, if you're scaling in, I only want to have full stops on 30% size. So basically, my scales are, um, even if I had three, four, five scales on the way up, the total scale on the way up would be 30%. And then only after confirmation, I can add the remaining size and lower my stop to, uh, um, to a point where it's the same risk. I think it's a, it's a valid strategy. It's very important to have a set risk management. And like you did, to reduce your risk, you reduce your exposition over here, uh, lower your trail, you lower your stop, and that's what saves your capital. All right, Carlton. Exactly. So I think we're running out of time over here. Uh, thank you for having uh, uh, with us today. Uh, we will be, um, think like maybe end of the week, uh, we we'll can cover something else together. Uh, congratulations on your trading today and uh, see you next time, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.